pleased to have on the show is HFX Wanderers defender Peter Chalet. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. How have you been? I've been all right. Uh, you know, things are going up and down a little bit here with COVID, but uh, overall, I've been good and can't complain too much. So thanks for having me. <laughs> Well, I love a good complaining, so don't worry. You can do that here on the show because, as you mentioned, you, you have to figure that the first question is going to be about the pandemic because I know in Halifax, you guys actually started training in March and things were going, and then to your point, there's been a resurgence in cases and, and you've had to stop. How has the off-season been for you, just the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs? Um, honestly, it's a very long off-season, of course, for all of us, um, so that makes it harder immediately, but... Me personally, I've been in Halifax since January, so I've been able to do some some extra work uh, until March, until preseason actually started. And we had the first good couple of weeks. We got some good training sessions and even were able to play some 11 v 11s at one point. But then uh, things just got worse. We got locked down again, and at the moment, uh, we're not even able to train really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be really difficult. But let's try to remember some good times, shall we? And let's go back to that bubble in PEI. And maybe try to explain what led to the turnaround for the Wanderers, where it was obviously a difficult 2019 season, but in the bubble 2020, you're finalists for the league title. What changed? Um, I mean, of course, the team changed a lot. We had a big turnover of players uh, from the year before. And um, I don't know, the, the whole vibe of the team was just right. I think uh, the way the club and the, especially the staff that was with us in the bubble uh, the way we dealt with everything in the bubble and, and to overcome that adversity. Uh, I think they've done a really good job and the team in general have done a really good job, which I think helped us on the way. And um, yeah, I think we played much better football than last year too. We were more dangerous than the first year. And uh, yeah, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and the belief within the team was just there throughout the whole tournament. So that started early in preseason that we said, hey guys, we can do something here. We have a special team. And um, yeah, so I think that's that's the main reason why why we did so well. What kind of role did your head coach play, Stephen Hart, as we know ends up winning Coach of the Year? I think it was one of the first times I really saw him smiling and joking, but well-deserved for him to get that. And just what was he like throughout that whole process as well and making sure that you guys were, were ready and, like I said, ultimately become finalists? Um, I think Coach played a huge role. And uh, to be honest, uh, of course, he's very experienced and... Uh, uh, he's been to a lot of tournaments in his career. Uh, I think he's one of the most capped coaches in Gold Cup history even, so he knows what it means to be on the road with a team, to, to entertain 20, 25 guys at the same time, keep them all together in a hotel situation for a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I think uh, he definitely um, was a huge reason for us to be successful in the bubble. Do you think Halifax is getting its due? I mean, again, you know, you you make it all the way to the final, but do you think that this is still a team that's put in that same category as Forge FC or Cavalry as far as being contenders? That's up to you to judge, you know. Uh, all we do is here just uh, put in the work on the pitch. I think we still have a lot to prove because, like you said, it was a bubble situation last year. It wasn't a normal season. And uh, that's why I think we still have a lot to prove, but uh, I'm very, very confident in that group. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of this group, you know, I think in that training camp to start in, in March, you had 13 returning players from the 18 last season, and then you had four new additions, but one of them really the only one with CPL experience is Maury Donor. But what do you make of these additions to the team? Just how do you think that they can help out? I think so far all the additions that we made for this year have been really good in practice. I'm, I've been impressed um, with all of the guys. Uh, Maury, of course, he has a lot of experience in the CPL and he's, he's a very good player. Um, he's, of course, someone who's playing close to me, um, which I'm looking forward to for sure. And, you know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of quality we added to the team with Jeremy. It's a lot of experience. Um, Eric's finally made it into the country. Um, and other guys from, from U Sports like Pierre Lamoth, uh, great addition to I really like him. And a couple of young guys who just bring hunger to the team and hunger to the, to the squad in general. Mm -hmm. You're one of four players who have been with this team from the start, 2019. Do you embrace that veteran role? Do, do you feel yourself kind of reveling in a, in a bit of a leadership role? I mean, definitely, you know, um, it's, it's Rampi and me, Rampa Sadami, who are sharing the captaincy. 
Um, you know, we definitely try to lead the team, but we're also aware that we're young captains and, um, you know, experience. There's other players on the team are more experienced than us. But we just, uh, you know, we don't believe in just two leaders on the team. I think leader, leadership can, can come from any player on the pitch, off the pitch, uh, from, from the staff, of course. So I think it's more a collective, a collective thing here. Mm -hmm. I do have to ask, being a defender, is there a particular CPL striker or just anyone who's coming down the pitch and you're just looking at them going, oh, no? Like, who's the hardest to defend against? That's a difficult question. There's a lot of good players in this league. Um, for me personally, so far, first year, I thought Malonga was a striker who, who I found hard to defend because he's just very smart in the things he does. Um, also, Luis Pereira, who played for us in the first year, was was really good, probably one of the best strikers. You know, I've seen him more in practice than in games because he was struggling with injuries. But um, yeah, them two is definitely up there from my experience in the CPL so far. Of course, I play against Akim Garcia in, in training all the time, so he's definitely up there too. And I think he proved it as well. So um, yeah, those three would definitely stand out for me. Well, Peter, I've had the pleasure of working sideline at a game in Halifax, so I've experienced firsthand the love that fan base has for the team. I, I'm, I can imagine that that's obviously what's motivating you to get out there sooner rather than later. That's why we'd love a resolution here for the 2021 season. But for people who haven't been there, what's it like playing in Halifax in this soccer mad city that just loves their team? It's amazing, honestly. It's a huge reason for me that I, I want to stay here for the next little while for sure because we just have that tight-knit community and the fans are amazing they support us no matter what even last year in the bubble we could literally feel the support even though they weren't there but we could feel it through social media and and, and everything so uh having the fans have and the whole city are having our back uh, definitely pushes you and you know playing on the wanderers grounds is uh, i think for every one of those players just amazing and right now we only have four players on the team who, who played there for the Wanderers. So uh, I think the other, I think 16 players right now, they are, they haven't even experienced yet. So they are just looking forward to, to get on the Wanderers grounds with some fans, hopefully sometime soon. It'll be a great experience for them once they do finally get to play in front of the fans. And we just want to see fans in the stands and want to see you guys out on the pitch. But uh, in the meantime, stay safe, Peter. Really appreciate you taking the time here today on One Soccer. Thanks for having me. Stay safe.